was a Q. Go. Go. Good? Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, as always, is the tech guy, the editor, <coughs> director, project manager, and he's also my husband, Phil Gordimer. Good afternoon, there. good evening, good morning, where you're watching us from, and for our UK audience, have a pint for us. Now, you're probably wondering who this character is here next to me. This is our son, Kevin. He is our graphic designer and our grill master and all around our favorite son. And there's Thank no family resemblance here. It's just mini me. Yeah. So why don't you start pouring? We also have a studio audience here. Our friends and neighbors, Cindy and, and Bo, are here with Woo! us. And a little later, our favorite daughter-in-law, Kevin's wife, and their daughter will be joining us, too. You just took me off camera. Hold on, I will fix that. Wow. There you go. <sighs> I can fix these things eventually. So today we're having oh. lemon oh. drops because it's all about grilling and warm weather and I think lemonade, but I want to blow up lemonade. So we're having lemon drops today. All right, everyone, come and get them. Let's get these all out of the way. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> you coming, dear? Should Kevin deliver? You'll have to bring it to me. Right, deliver, please. I'm doing some technical stuff. All right. Breaking things? Yeah, pretty much. All right. There we go. So now, That's if great. I did that right, uh, our... Cheers. There we go. Now we're back Cheers, with the kids. right things. Cheers. Thank you, and thanks for joining us. Hmm. Oh, that's good. Not too tart. That is good. Yeah. That's actually very good. Yep. So it's all about grilling today. Do you have a spiel first, dear? Mm -mm. Oh, I can get started for a change? Yes, you can. Yay. So we're talking about grilling today. Not just how to grill or what to grill, but some of those grilling memories. Maybe you have fond memories of a family barbecue all around the grill. Uh, maybe you have traditions of things you grilled. So we'll talk about all of those. And I'm going to be doing some cooking today, so let's get started on that. First thing we're cooking today, I pre-made these. I've got some nice little shish kebabs. They're for some sausage, something a little different. I know a lot of people think shish kebabs and it's beef or chicken, boring, so I thought sausage and peppers, why not? And we're going to be making some burgers. Get that out of the way. I've got this ground beef here. My favorite organic ground beef, a couple of pounds. Now, I don't use many pre-made spice mixtures. This is one I grew up with, Morton's Nature Seasonings. It's like the whole spice aisle all in one little jar. It's kind of an all-purpose thing. It's a little more interesting than just plain old salt and pepper. So I'm going to use that today. Now, I know a lot of people lately were saying, don't pre-salt your burger meat. Don't mix it. It makes them tough. I think it makes it flavorful. I find what makes it tough is when you overcook them or overmix it. Impeccably clean hands, the best kitchen tools ever. So no haters with me touching because you know this is how I cook. Best kitchen tools. I just want to mix this up. Get that seasoning all through there. It really doesn't take long. All right, well, while you're doing that, let's see who's here. Oh. Yeah, who's let's, here? Let's get our normal little crowd going. Uh -huh. um, of course, we can't have a, a live stream without Hank. Hello, Hank. Uh, yeah, 187 day run of temps over 90 degrees with 120 of these days greater than 110 degrees. It's a dry heat. Wrong. And that is why I will be staying in New Jersey. Forgot to mention Haboob's unexpected, unpredictable dust storms that sweep across Arizona's desert landscape at any time brings miles long and thousands of feet high and brings traffic to a halt. I've seen And them. this is why we live in New Jersey. Cindy has a comment, question? Peter, I have a question. Um, like a steak, should you leave the um, ground beef like at room temperature prior to making your yep. hamburgers? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I always like to bring things up to room temperature before I cook them, uh, because it just helps them cook more efficiently and more evenly. 
Excuse well, you know me. what? While you're uh, prepping, yeah. <laughs> while you're prepping, let's uh, bring up the map and see uh, who's yeah. here. First, let me get the right screen up for us. Okay. So we'll start out the world. Okay. Obviously, the hosts are in New Jersey. I don't think we have any from outside, so let's make this map a little bigger. No UK peeps this week, huh? No, UK, uh, no oh. at least not yet. Okay. Hold on, let's see who's here. We've got Mary from Reading, Pennsylvania. Hello, Mary. We got Jack from Scranton. Oh, hi, Jack. Oh, well, Manor's checking in know. again, Danny. Okay. Outside the um, deck, Milton Manor. Hold on. They're coming in faster than I can do it. All right. Anne, she was here last week from... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back, Cape. Anne. And then Helen going to Cape May again. Excellent, Helen. AJ, I wonder if there's anywhere near our friend JJ in New York City. Watch us from my apartment. All right, could be. Uh, hold on. I saw a bunch more. Uh, NJ Fishing from Passaic. Ooh, I like that logo. Nice. And our new friends <coughs> over Excuse at me. Fox Hollow. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. And they're grilling next weekend for their episode. Oh. So I guess while we're at camp, we'll have to check in with them. And yes, good old please. Hank says hi. All right. That's enough for the map. We'll see who jumps in All later. Right. So we're ready for the grill. Look how fast I came together. I like big, chunky hamburgers like this, and they don't have to be perfect. You know, people buy those those plastic molds to get them all exactly perfect. I like things handmade, you know, and I put a little dimple in them because I do find it helps that from puffing up and shrinking too much. But I like a nice thick burger. I rarely buy the pre-frozen ones because they're just so thin. So Kevin, my grill master, it's all on you now, kid, passing the torch. Now give me a moment because I need to go wash my hamburger -y hands, dear. So do a song and dance yeah, or, or let's, do something. Let's, Excuse let's, me. Let's bring up the grill cam. There you go. Yes, we actually have a grill cam. Don't ask me how we did it. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> we'll see if he gets there. What happened? We love, the grill, we love the grill cam. Oh. Hey, you know, I... Really? <laughs> hey, we, if we can be done with technology, we're going to do it. Let's see if he actually makes it up there and doesn't let the cat out. And you're back, and there back. he is. There's our Bobbity. Let's turn his microphone on so we can find out what he's saying. Like, oh, crap! This is a family show, Kevin. No bad words. Okay, let's put him on audio follows video. Uh, mm -hmm. He's still getting ready, so okay. back to us. Back to us, Bob. We're back to me anyway. Well, actually, okay. we can have a little fun here. We can, uh, we can keep an eye on him and do you at the same time. Yeah, we'll be checking in on Kevin every few minutes. We'll just say, let's check in on Kevin to see how he's doing. Let me get my notes. Where did I put Here they are. <sighs> Doing a live stream two weeks in a row, we were kind of like, oh, we got this, we got this. And then this morning we woke up and we went, oh, we didn't prepare. Well, well then let's let the war begin. All right. Brian wants to know, charcoal grill or gas grill person, let the war begin. <laughs> Cindy, you're making a face over there. Yeah, there are people who swear by charcoal, swear by gas. I've used both. I, I'm lazy now. I hate lighting charcoal, so just give me my gas grill and I'm happy. Though when I was this morning uh, looking at different things to get ready for this episode, I thought, hmm, maybe we should buy a little charcoal grill uh, or hibachi or something just so we can say we have one. And you like the gas grill, Cindy, don't you? It's easy. Yeah. I have a little Weber that I will gladly donate to the next show that you want to do. Okay. With the charcoal and everything to get you going. Well, now every hold on, uh, let's get me on screen here. Swear by the taste of the charcoal. I swear by it. Yeah. Well, now mm -hmm. well, everyone is into uh, the Blackstones, which is oh, a yeah. yeah that big mm. grill. Yeah. yeah. Cast griddle, uh, cast yeah. iron. Yeah, but my first cooking job, I was a. Fry cook in a deli, and I just worked the griddle all day, so I could see the. the all right, so we have at least one person who's got an answer. Okay, Harry says I prefer charcoal over gas. You get better flavor. Okay, that's you may. 
So let's set the stage. Setting the stage for family grilling memories. Let's talk about that. Speaking of family, we see your bald spot, Kevin. I don't know what you're looking at, but. <laughs> He's trying to get it up on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so grilling memories. So we always, when I was growing up, we had this huge, huge, insanely big backyard. Didn't have a pool though. I never understood that, but big backyard, huge garden. So we always had fresh produce. You know, my parents were uh, children of the depression. So we always had a, a victory garden. And uh, so we grew up with our vegetables and a really nice patio and we didn't have air conditioning. So in the summertime, we ate out almost every night. And their generation was very big on barbecues, inviting people over. So we would have these huge barbecues, not even just on the holidays, just on random weekends where, you know, the phone would start ringing or my mom would get on the phone and, and just people would show up. So that was always kind of fun because when you're a little kid and everyone's there, why are they seeing something? Oh, it's because it's delayed. Yeah, it? they're okay. looking at so Kelsey says, my favorite thing to grill is ribs low and slow. Oh, yeah. Me too. One of my favorites. I don't know that we did many ribs when I was growing up. It was usually the standard fare, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers, um, depending on who was there. Sometimes it was steak or chops, but... Usually it was hot dogs and hamburgers, especially when there's a crowd. Yeah, but not us. You know, we have to do lamb. Well. Lamb and lamb. That's because we're fancy, and, dear. And, you know, spatchcock chickens that's and Cornish game hens and all that stuff. Yes, that's because we're fancy. I wouldn't eat hot. Ugh. We're fancy? Really? <laughs> yes, dear. But I have a lot of great memories of, of these huge barbecues. Now, the funny thing is, I think... We've only, in 23 years together, I think we have hosted one barbecue in our old house, one time. All right, Hank wants to know, is the grill opener closed? And literally, as he said it, Kevin closed the grill. <laughs> there you go, Kev. Now, Kevin was like, oh, that, that's gonna take five minutes to cook all that stuff. Like, okay, maybe 15 <laughs> oh, minutes. Oh, wait, all right. Here you go. <laughs> there you go Kev. Good job, Kev. It's the grill cam. It is. So I th Aye. I'm thinking that. And look who's here. Let me here. put it, let me put the map up first. Okay. Oh, so we can make sure that Melissa made it. Yay! Hi, Melissa. Is that our? That's oh, our she's Melissa. in North. This is a different yeah. Melissa. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's this not is Melissa North Boyd. Carolina because are the Melissa we know is in Missouri. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Well. Welcome anyway. Absolutely. Anyway, I think we need to host a barbecue here, Jerry. I think on one of these weekends, we need to be home from camp and do like a neighborhood barbecue, you know, for like well, these guys. And especially since we now have a new juice machine. That's up at camp. Yeah, we'll bring it home. Yeah. All right, so so, so side story here. Yeah. We do a Saturday um, open cocktail hour. And at our campground. We, at our campground. And we make a lot of Cosmos to the tune of like 50 or 60. And yes, we have 100 glass martini glasses. Just like these. So this year, we bought a juice machine. You know when you go into the diner? That and they machine have those that's got circulating the orange the, circulating? Yeah. yeah, we're going to make Cosmos in yeah. that. Yeah. Because we have more money than cents. You're assuming we have sense. But it'll be fine, and then we'll bring it home, and we'll use it for parties here. So it's not like you can laugh. You don't have to. <laughs> Living in a New York City apartment, you would be surprised what you can do with indoor drilling and on the balcony. I guess you mean grilling. Yeah, if you can have a grill on your balcony, absolutely. And uh, I know those little grill pans, too, like I use them. Oh, this the is funny. Actually, I think this is Sean. But let's see what happens here. Hold on, let me advance this. Dawn. Yeah, it says Dawn, but yeah. I really think it's Sean, but okay. At the event, date or crowd, no one was allowed near the grill. It was my husband's bonding territory and beer garden. No, that would be Dawn, not Sean. That would be Dawn. Dawn Ross, maybe. That's funny. Beer garden, indeed. Anyway, I think we should host a, a neighborhood Woo! little barbecue. That's funny. We'll get Sean and Ange to come down and maybe, uh, anyway, I don't know who else, a few people. 
Oh yeah, oh. bring it in town. Yeah. I want three girls going. <laughs> so one of my favorite grilling moments of one of these barbecues that we had was one night my parents, well, everyone was drinking. Everyone who could drink, who was allowed to drink. I was maybe eight or nine. And this was the 70s and, and women's lib was the big thing. Well, all the men and boys didn't have any shirts on. And my mother and all of my aunties, Hal, sounds like a party. They all got to be in their bonnet and they all got together. You know, 14 middle-aged women. And they said, well, if the men can take their shirts off, so can we. And they all took their shirts off and spent the entire barbecue in their bras. I, of course, at nine, eight or nine, was horrified and... and I'm horrified. But, yes, that, that, that's one of my favorite. And, of course, they all forgot it the next day, even though most of them slept out in the lawn overnight because... They like their Manhattans and martinis. Yeah, that's one of my favorite memories. Isn't that sad? No. Probably says awesome. a lot about me, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Lucky barbecue. <laughs> we need to bring those back. Right? <laughs> so at our barbecue, you want all the women to just be in their bras? Okay. Said, one of these. <laughs> one of the... I love sleeping alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need to learn heat control. My burgers go from raw to well done in an instant. Yeah, you know, and that's like with any cooking. You got to get practice at it, and every grill is different. Like I always tell you, my ovens are different from your oven. My stovetop is different from your oh, stovetop. Oh, wait, this is really good. This is what? really good. Ready? Ready. Cole, reason to have teenagers lift and change the propane tanks. Yeah. Yep. Well... We don't have a teenager. We have a 30-something out there to do that for us, but uh, close enough. Right. Even today, we're Let's like, Let's see what he's Teddy. got going on there. Well, there, it, it's been like, come on. It's come the on, grill on. cam. Yes. Have more cocktails, guys. Help yourselves. Anyway, so do you like to have the whole family in the Oh, home? the, the, uh... Wow, someday I'm going to... In, Finish the sentence on this live stream. Kevin says, start the burgers on indirect heat. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Hot on the outside, cooler on the inside. And how wants a cheeseburger? We'll be making cheeseburgers. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so if I finish my sentence. I see now you forgot me. You maybe forget what I was talking about even. So do you get the whole family involved in your grilling, in your barbecues? Or like, Lou, are you like just my domain, my grill? Uh, it depends what we're cooking, but generally mm -hmm. I lead and I, I flip and I turn stuff and, and whomever is there is watching over my shoulder. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to give advice because I feel I know a lot about it. Okay. And the people who are usually around yeah. me don't know so much about it. So okay. I try to try to throw a little bit of knowledge out there. Okay. Well, that's a good way. We have a Facebook answer to that yeah. from Robert. Mom was a grill champion growing up. My dad never wanted anything to do with it. He was from the generation where cooking was the wife's job. Yes, I am that old. Yeah, that did not fly in my house when I was growing up. Uh, they both shared the grilling responsibility, and then as I got older and started to learn to cook, guess who got to do it? Uh, starting with lighting the darn charcoal and, and uh, carrying. Now, the thing where I grew up, what we use as a patio was actually used to be where our garage was before we bought the house. There was a one-car garage that had like a shop area. So it was a pretty big space, but the garage had been torn down before we bought the house, and it was at the end of the driveway. So like there's a parking area behind our house and then this garage. So it's not like here where I just step out onto my back deck right. and the grill's right there. You had to schlep stuff like 100 yards out to, yeah. maybe not 100 yards, right, but so it seemed like it. was a fan club. Bo's Grill Master from Hal. So maybe I should send you out there with Kevin and teach him what he... Kevin grills constantly. Like He's like, Christmas Day, I'm grilling. Okay. Um, yeah, we... The family, when I was growing up, one person would be in charge of the grill, and then my mother did everything else, and you didn't enter her domain or disturb her because, you know, when it's 90 degrees and she's making potato salad, just leave her alone. 
I don't use my traditional gas grill that much anymore. I use a Blackstone grill. It is an outdoor cast iron griddle. Yeah, that's one of those new things. And I, I said earlier, my first cooking job was uh, in, in a deli. And so I worked a grill for a lot of hours. So I can see the draw to that. Okay, mental note, do not let Hal near a grill. Who has used an entire bottle of lighter fluid? Yeah, one of my brothers did that once and uh, soaked it all, threw the match in, whoosh. And it took a long time for that charcoal lighter fluid to burn off and, and, and get the smell out. Yes, Kevin, we know you are crazy enough to grill you around even in the winter and snow. We know that. How is our food looking? Let's check in on Kevin. All right, I'm seeing some cooking there happening. Okay. Good boy, good boy. So let's talk about the skewers he's using. Um, I'll show you them later, but they are long and flat, and that's great, I think, for when you're cooking things because things don't spin around on them as much. Um, I also, you know, you're probably used to these little bamboo ones. I have some that are metal. These are more rounded, and then these are square. So these are like the flat ones, they're square things, don't spin on them as much. But you know what I use these for? Who? Me or them? Oh. <laughs> we'll tell them when they come down. Uh, I use these when I do baked potatoes because the skewer heats up and cooks them from the inside out. But there's all kinds of skewers out there for grilling and uh, those ones that he's using now, I just use them today because they're flat and big and I want it big kebabs. <clears throat> so how about, oh, all right. This leads me to my next point. Grill time is beer can chicken time, my favorite. Well, our son Kevin makes that. That's his specialty dish, which makes me think, do you have or are there any um, signature family recipes around the grill? Is there that one thing that dad always grilled, or, or this was the one thing we're gonna make for this barbecue or that barbecue. For us, when I was growing up, there were certain dishes that were summertime just for barbecues. Potato salads, then in the 80s, pasta salad. Uh, my mom would once a year try and make baked beans from scratch and fail miserably at it. Um, even though she was an excellent cook, she just could never get baked beans done. The one thing that they did do well and they would only do it like once a year. We would do a whole leg of lamb on a rotisserie, on a charcoal grill. And uh, once we got our first gas grill, they tried it and it was really good, but it wasn't the same as when it was on the gas grill or on the charcoal grill. And the funny thing is whenever they would do that, the neighbors would just start flocking. We had one neighbor in particular and she would come over and she would never stay for dinner, but she would always say, Nancy, you're killing me with the smell of that. It smells so good. And, so you'd say, get your husband, come back and have dinner with us. And they just never would for some reason. Okay, we have one from Facebook that okay. is a memory that we are very familiar with. Ready? Uh, do I need a drink first? Maybe. <sighs> I just opened my grill for the first time and discovered a colony of mice. Martini glasses. Hold on. And in the grill, hold on. I, 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 I gotta answer this, but I need this first. <laughs> I thought you'd do that. And then so it's... we have two mice stories. A couple years ago, up at camp, that exact same thing happened. Took the cover off the grill, opened it up, and I heard scurrying. And as I opened it, I saw them all running down in below where the tank is in this big, huge nest where they had made. They made a condo. Yeah, and I opened the little doors where the tank is, and there was more stuff. They had a whole city, a condo in there, like a townhouse. A couple years later, on our deck, uh, up at camp, our deck is covered and I have a full kitchen and everything. And we used to leave all the martini glasses and everything underneath here. And it was, it was very sheltered, so they never got dirty. We would just lock it up for the winter. Well, one year, he went up, I'm pointing to Phil, he went up early to open. I couldn't get the time off and he went up early and he goes, oh. Really? Oh, there's, there's mice in the martini glasses. They made a nest and everything. Okay, whatever. I went up like two days later when I was finally able to join him. He left them all there for me. So I opened them up and there's like 20 mice looking at me. And they were literally lounging in the martini glasses. They had built little nests in them. 
They were big mice, little mice. It was disgusting. We had to evict them. And then I used a lot of bleach, cleaning all those martini glasses and all the shelves. And, and then we put a lot of steel wool in all the cracks and we've never had the problem since, but yeah, that's terrifying. So I wonder if you got a new grill because that year when we had them in the grill because they were like, it was all down in the workings and mechanics. Once we got them out, we fired it up and it just stunk. So we were like, nope, new grill, right in the trash. So I, here, here's someone who shares your same story. The job was laying the charcoal, I hated it. I was so happy when my folks got their first gas grill. Yeah, me too. I used to do it with a propane torch. My dad had a little propane torch, well, a big one. And to stand out there, you know, <coughs> waiting for the stupid charcoal to light. All right, it's my turn. Is it your turn? Oh, yeah, it's it's my turn. And for most of you who've been watching us for quite a while, you know that we like to feature other small YouTube channels that are on their way up because we know how hard it is. And down in the description for the show, you'll find a link to Hamakua Homestead. So let's talk about her. So this is Hamakua, this is Tiffany. And Tiffany has a ranch, and she does canning and fermenting and hydrating and pickling. And the way I found her is our good friend, Karen in the kitchen. Yay, Karen. Um, just did an episode on baked beans, and they did a group share where seven others did beans. So um, uh, Tiffany did pickled bean salad. And we have never really done canning, so it was kind of interesting. Um, she's got 83 videos. She's coming up on 2,000 subscribers. And if you're into canning and preserving, this looks like the place to be. So check her out, leave her a comment, give a like, give a subscribe, tell her you came here from Let's Celebrate TV. Let's see if we can help her out. Back to you, Bob. Yay! Actually, I need to check her out more too because I want to get into canning. Not that I have time going up there, coming back here, but it would be fun to say at least I did it at least once. So, okay, I love the big family barbecues. We used to host the food, the family, the fun. The only thing I didn't like was the bugs. Yeah, that's always a tough part of having those eating outside and having those grills, especially the yellow jackets and stuff that come and like try and take your sandwich from you. I'm seeing flames. Okay. Looks like it's getting there. Woohoo! If you remember, those of you who are old enough, I know, I know Lou is, Bo is, but I don't know about you, Cindy. They used to have these coils, green coils, and mm -hmm. you lit them, you set them in the middle of your table and it would just slowly burn. It was a bug repellent. Oh yeah, so you so you're looking at me like the, the green what? Yeah, the, green. the green coils. Yes, you know, dear. I do know. Where do they go? They sound fabulous. It's generational. Yeah, back? yeah. Toxic fumes, toxic chemicals I burning like on your dinner table to get rid of the bugs, and then they didn't work anyway, because the bees would like fly through it and be like, woohoo! Yeah, but I do remember those, and I, I used to hate. My mother would always I hated it. We're eating outside tonight. Ugh. You know, schlep all the stuff out, eat outside with the bugs, schlep it all in. Now where we eat, we are now, like at your house, in your house, it's right outside the door and in our house. So you're not walking, you know, a quarter mile to the stupid patio that was out behind the house. But still, the bugs, yeah. I got that. They can be a pest now and then. Yeah. So how about um, activities around the grill or when we have these family dinners or, or okay. like, what activities can we do? If we were to plan a little barbecue, what can we plan oh, to keep people so busy? They were called raid, raid coils. coils. Yes, yes. Raid yep. coils, yep. Leave it to hell. I wonder if they still make them. I haven't looked for them for a while, but uh, you never know. What you doing over there, dear? I just got a message. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this in here. It's, uh... You got a message. Should I be jealous? No. The Geek of Me wants to know how you got that grill camera into your live stream. Okay. All right, give me a second here. I'll fire up my cell phone and we'll go take a walk. All right. All right, so. You can go ahead and shake and make noise in your time. All right, uh, so if I do that, okay. So this is my are. view 
of the control station back here, and you can see in the number four spot, Kevin's out there. How did we do that? Well, let me show you. We'll go take a walk. Wow, that is a big delay I'm seeing. And we walk up the stairs. And our regular kitchen, which you've seen before. Good timing. So the way we do this is we've got a camera. And for those who are into geeky things, HDMI does not work well past 15 feet. So we have a 100 foot fiber optic cable running down here in the window down to the studio. And then Kevin is wearing a wireless microphone. Yes, I am. That's going up there. And that's how we do it. And it's a lot of stuff. And so now this, this is live Burger Cam. Yay. You did this in good timing. I them there nice we and go, slow cheeseburgers. All right. Now you'll all get dizzy while I walk back mm -hmm. downstairs. Hold on, you, you need more of these? So I can switch it back to the other camera. Here he comes, down the stairs. And you've seen the bar many times before. <laughs> and there's, sh sh show our Oops, guests. Let's show our, oh. Wait a minute, let's show our guests. Here we go, we have a guest studio audience. Hi. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right, back to me. Back to you, Bob. <clears throat> Well, I think we're going to be making some more. Uh, oh, wait, we don't have any more lemons. Yes, we do. <coughs> should be some upstairs. No, we don't. Oh, OK. Unless there's another bag I don't know about. I might have if they got mixed up in all the drawers. But I I, I, I almost might so, think dear. this is JJ, but I know that he doesn't cook. So let's see how this goes. Oh, it's Kathy. That's why. Kathy, yeah. I live in a high rise, so I can't have a grill, but I do use my grill pan as much as I can. Me too, and that's great. I'm so glad to hear that. I have a couple different grill pans, and, and I use them quite often. Um, especially, you know, you get home from work, I don't, even though the grill's right there. Sometimes I just don't feel like stepping outside, pushing the button to light it, um, if the weather's bad or it's cold or too hot. But give me a little cast iron grill pan and I'm good. Though we used it down here, one to film an episode, uh, the grilled asparagus Caesar. And we might have set off the smoke alarm a couple of times while we were making that episode, which was fun. Okay, so where were we? How must think it's a daytime TV show? Like, studios, you get a car, you get a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Cindy, Cindy and Bo are getting cars, Hal. You know, if you were here, you would have gotten a brand new. Um, <laughs> 2002 Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> anyway. I'm having way too much fun here. <laughs> um, so I was saying, or trying to say, if we were to have this neighborhood grill, uh, uh, barbecue, what fun activities could we do? What fun activities did you do with your family if you had them growing up, or if you, uh, the church thing. Oh, wait, wait, here comes food. Special delivery. Mazel tov, my child. Good job. Very good. Vegetables have a nice little char on them. Sausage is still good on the kebabs. And I grilled the burgers the way I like them. A little more medium, so there is some, some pink, pink in the middle. middle. But, but still extra, extra juicy. juicy. And, and why would you do anything else? I taught you well. You've good done point. well, Grasshopper. Good you point. have surpassed the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we need to figure out some fun things to do if we have a, a barbecue. And maybe you had some fun things. When I was growing up, we just, again, I said we didn't have a pool, and I don't know why. Uh, but, you know, the kids would just entertain themselves somehow. And I think we need to have a little more structure and a little more fun. Sharon says, I'm still learning the art of direct versus indirect heat area of the grill. Yeah, and it is an art. It takes practice, like anything else. And every grill is different. So what works on my grill, indirect heat here, might not work on yours. Might not work on Kevin's or Lou's or Kevin Cindy's. must know this guy. My husband grills year round even when there's snow on the ground. Really? I'm that dumb. Yes, you are. If I can get the grill to hold temperature, I but grill. But 
you have that little hutch built over your little shack built over your grill. Yes. And we so saw I even grill in the rain. Uh huh. We saw one in Sam's Club. Uh, just yesterday. One of the best hundred bucks I ever spent for one of those little. Uh, this, this was a little more than hundred. This was like made of red wood. It was like six hundred dollars. Yeah, my budget's not that deep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would buy it for you, except I bought you a kegerator, so. <laughs> Could use a new grill, just saying. So Carol says I can never get chicken right on my grill. By the time it's cooked through, the outside is burnt. Yeah, I hated it when when we were growing up. And they'd have those chicken barbecues, or my dad would try, or, or one of the drunken uncles would try and grill chicken. And you know, they put it on the grill, slather it with barbecue, and then that burns up, and then you have raw chicken. Gross. Chicken, you have to yes. in direct heat. Right. And in those days, we didn't know those words, indirect heat. But you had to do it lower and slower. Yeah. You know, this is, this is the 70s when I grew up, Kevin. <laughs> we didn't know such fancy words like, you know, Indirect heat. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing. You need to do it lower and slower. If you're using charcoal, especially indirect, but which you can do easier on a gas grill. But yeah, you, you don't want that flare up, that flame. You want to treat it, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, when I do chicken, I treat it like this is the oven. So my heat is here, my chicken is here. The heat in the oven flip is five cooking aside, it. Flip it five minutes right. And get it off the heat. Exactly. And, and you're cooking, then you're just roasting it. The right. happens in those first five minutes. Right, and I don't do the sauce until the very, very end to avoid those flare-ups and having it charred. Okay, so evidently we're making some of our people jealous. <laughs> Jolene, you're having way too much fun. How do I get an invitation to be in the audience? <laughs> well, if you live near us... It involves mud wrestling. Um, yeah. <laughs> mud wrestling, yeah. Um, yeah, you can mud wrestle Lou. Um, no, you know, if we know you and, and you're, you're in the area, then absolutely. Be we love studio audiences. That's true. That's true, <laughs> Kevin, yeah. That's a fresh lemon. Not even a good bottle. We can be bribed with a bottle of wine. Or a box of wine. Yeah. <laughs> or a can. Uh, wine from a faucet I'm good with. So Mary asks, how do you keep things from sticking? I oil the grill, but stuff always sticks when I go to flip it. Well, you know, a lot of times that's because you're trying to flip it too soon. soon. Too soon. Yeah. Just like in a cast iron pan or in your stainless steel pan, you got to wait. If you go to try and flip it and it doesn't want to give up, it's not ready. Just leave it alone. It will release when it's ready. Exactly. It takes a little patience. Because I've never made that mistake. You know, you could have... Flip that fish like well last night and fish is tough. Fish is tough. Fish Even is in a frying tough. pan, it's tough. Fish is tough. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 what? oh, what? Oh, oh, what? Oh, oh, this is a good one. It's oh, a good one. Dear. Relax. Debbie says happy anniversary. Belated just found out. Thank you, thank you. Twenty three years. I don't know how that happened. I still don't know how that happened. Lots of alcohol and drugs. Well, alcohol anyway. Which I'll be happy more of very soon. Commitment to staying together. Oh, we're committed, okay, that's for sure. <laughs> it just happened. And now it's like, well, let's keep going. Amy asks, will we be seeing you grill this summer? Well, you know, now that we have this newfangled outdoor camera, I think you may be seeing me grill. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what? Hold on, hold on. But no, 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 this is good. Do? Oh, Dixie. Hi, Dixie, I'm glad you're here. I'm just going to eat something. I don't want my burger cold. All right, you got um, a burger gut bun behind you. Make something up. All right, I'll make a burger. You get this out of the way. No, I don't want a burger. Me want shish kebab. Absolutely, and I'm going to use my fingers. My impeccably clean hands. Just like that. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not proud. And it's my TV show. Eh. I made it. Suddenly, I got everybody got up from the room. I made it. I get right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll at least eat over the table. Okay. Right, nappy, please. Thank you, Char. Hmm. Dixie. A little bit of smoke, a little bit of chocolate. Dixie, now you see what you created. <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. <laughs> that was good timing. That's excellent. Thank you. Now I need some water. Mm. Oh, yes. That already was up there. Hang on. Oh, that's right. good. Good job, Kevin. Stacy asks, what is the most unusual thing you've ever cooked on the grill? Believe it or not, 
the most unusual thing I ever did was clams. Do you remember that at yeah. the airport cookout? And we clams took on cl the clams on the grill. The grill. Yep, did. you scrub them good like you would any way else. Put them on the grill, close the lid, and after just a couple minutes, they open up and you get this grilled mm. roasted clam. They're steaming in the shell. Mm. And then they get a little charry on them. And if you do it carefully, the, the, the clam juice doesn't boil all out, but yeah. Okay, I swear I didn't write this one. I really do, I swear, because sure I think can. they're talking about Cindy and, and Bo, but exactly. here we go. Our neighbors always show up with beer and desserts every time we grill. <laughs> I would love that. At least they bring beer and desserts. I guess I have to grill more. <laughs> no, I would love that. Uh, I know what the answer to this next one is. We'll see if we agree. What is your favorite thing to grill? My favorite thing to grill is steak. I love steak on the grill. Actually, my favorite thing is to make my husband do it over an open fire. That is my favorite thing in the world. When he builds a roaring, screaming hot campfire and gets the coals of real wood, the coals, and then does the steaks on it. Then you oh. get the natural smoke flavor in the steak. That would yes, be yes, but I only like... And, and the second and, thing that we do the most of is lamb. Yes. Mm. We cook a lot of we lamb. We cook a lot of lamb. <laughs> what were you saying, Cindy? No, actually, grilled lamb is very good. Yeah. We, I do I do a leg of lamb on the grill. I didn't say it was bad. I was... So what were you saying about you don't know how to? You want to learn how to... I struggle with the steak. Really? Like... So you need a little probe thermometer. You need a thermometer. Uh-huh. That's point one. That <laughs> is... The, that's, that's the key. You need okay. that instant read thermometer. Yep. Yeah, and that's something when you're grilling, you can really... Uh, show yours. Like, there's so many, like, like theories. Yeah. Like, the you heat the grill is, super hot, and then yeah. you throw it on, sear it. Like yes? No? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just oh, not a good like steak griller. Well, I whether... I can do a burger, I can do chicken, I can right. do kebabs. Like well, however you start it... You want to pull it at a certain temperature. You want to take it off the heat um, before we, before you do that. So that's why you need that thermometer so you can see how hot it's gotten so you don't overcook it. Okay. Who likes the cheeseburgers plain? No condiments. I need to taste the meat from hell. <laughs> <laughs> there. Well, you know, why not? I mean, if you're, if you're cooking quality beef... I, absolutely, you want to, You don't want to muck it all up with ketchup and relish and all that other nonsense. You want to keep it pure, right? This, you want to taste it. This is block somebody. This is cool. Oh, the house I grew up in had a built-in grill in the kitchen. We use that all the time. I would love that. <gasps> Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, that'd be awesome. The Brady Bunch house had that, and they never used it. And that used to irritate me to no end. Yeah, but they had Alice, too. Yeah, I know, but it's like you've got that great grill built in with the chimney and everything, and that's so cool, and... Because, you know, TV show or not. Yeah, I would love that. Why didn't we do that option here, dear, when we built this house? Because... Hold on. Because we were spending a lot of money and didn't want to spend any more? Because, you know, how would we build a... Studio in our well, basement. In no, those you days. Can your stove top to a grill. You gotta put it in a range hood, but yeah. Well, we do that now. Yeah, I, I will. When, when that microwave dies, that's gonna become a range hood, but not until. I can make it die. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> We've spent enough money replacing appliances in the last couple of months, Kev. Just, Fair just, yeah. By the way, kebabs hard. Kebabs are hard. Oh, and you ate the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like what else? What? Cheese perfectly melted. Yeah. It's good. Yep. Just saying. Eric says rotisseries are the only reason to grill. Yeah, we need to get a rotisserie for this grill. I don't think we have one, do we? Do we do not. Not for this no. one. And I know we had one for the one up at camp. We need to look next week. Because, yeah, I love like lamb, a good roast beef even. Slow cooking on that rotisserie, even some chickens Here, or here's one from hens. Hank that would make Kevin very happy. Also, a pizza oven in the kitchen. I just got a pizza oven this year for Christmas. I haven't used yet. Oh, 
We don't eat pizza, but it, it's we do not. Yeah, but very for often. For us, it's a little different because Mackenzie loves making pizza homemade, so it's a little daddy-daughter bonding time. Mm-hmm. So I just got a pizza oven for Christmas this year. Very good. We got to break that out so the girl can use it. Uh-huh. Is it indoor one or outdoor one? It's an outdoor one. Okay. Which is fine. I can just hook it up to the take it outside, put it right on the stone. Hold on. Here. Reheating pizza, though. No, I'll take a burger. Just the burger. Make it. No, no run. No, no bun. bun. No. Okay. Just the burger. Okay. A fork. He's got a sleeve. <laughs> Kevin, your bald spot's getting bigger. Just saying. Get it from you. It's your jeans, Pop. Oh my God. And a fork, Kev. He needs a fork. I gave him a napkin. He can use his hands. <laughs> now you have to show yourself eating it, so Dixie will be happy. Are you feeling the love here? The, the <laughs> love of doing live streams with your family. All right. Here you go, Dixie. Good mm. bear. Mm. That is a good burger. And I remember when Ken was little and I tried to teach him to cook and he really wasn't interested and kind of did it begrudgingly. And now look at him. He cooks all the time. Mm. Okay. Hold on. Pat, pat, pat. <laughs> So these are all those silly memories, and this is what this whole live stream is about. Do a lot more than pizza in a pizza oven, like under brick. Okay, yeah, and that's something, those outdoor pizza ovens, we, we've looked at them too. We don't eat a lot of pizza at all, uh, but yeah, I guess you could do a lot under it, Hank. That is kind of a nice challenge. It's going to make me rethink if we want to splurge and get one. Pea bread in a brick oven. Yeah. Oh, M. Yeah. That would be tough. I'd have to practice on. that. I'm about to get yelled at. No, I'd have to practice that. I, I'm, I'm. Um, I, I will be your practice helper. Because you've had peaty bread. You all out there have not seen peaty bread because we cannot figure oh, out the logistics of how I'm making my homemade bread in an 11 minute. YouTube episode because it has to rise for an hour and then you punch it down and it rises again. And Maybe then... we need to talk to Daniela over in the UK because she does bread all the time. Okay. How she's doing that. Maybe we get her together with us on a live stream and we do it dueling and kind of see what we can do. That's not a bad idea. Let's email her today or tomorrow and we'll see about that. All right. You can do it today. Absolutely you can do it today. That's Scottish bread they do. Got to add bone to chicken. I don't know if I could do this guy shortbread in a pizza oven. Because no. you cook that lower at like a 325. It's like a, yeah, no. Forgot to add boned chicken. Oh, I got, the, oh, but that would cook really quickly too. Do you do hot dogs as well? Sometimes we cook hot dogs. <clears throat> Again, that's something we don't eat very often, but yeah, on the grill, that's when they're fun to have on the grill. And uh, I, I'm a fuss budget with hot dogs. I don't, I, I, I buy like the fancy gourmet ones that are all natural and all this other stuff. I don't, I, I, I'm just too fancy for, you know, Oscar like Meyer Oscar Mayer or High Grade or, 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 or uh, you know, anyway, but the Bowl and Basket brand. Yeah. The long, the long kosher ones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I like the, the, I don't know if it's Deets and Watson or Black Bear, but they, they have a natural casing, so they snap and they're all linked together like you used to get the butchers. Those ones I like. So public service announcement. We've had yes. up to 18 people watching live. Mazel tov. And there's still 10, but no one's liked our video. How about hitting a like button? That really goes a long way. Thank you. As my studio audience here is now getting out their phones, go, I like it, I like it. They're going to kick us out if we don't like it. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, you need to. Oh, I'm sure Emily's done fire. Okay. Are they watching? Yes. They All right. They don't comment, though. You're the one who comments. Okay. I'm the one that comments. Okay. They should be here soon. Probably not so after the live stream, but yeah. yeah. Especially since we have a Kenzie surprise for her. Yes, we do. So, Kenzie, if you're watching, Grandpa and Gampy have a surprise for you when you get here. And it's not Valentine Turtle. And it's not a unicorn. Anything else, dear? Any more comments, no. questions, The comment concerns. bank has dried up on uh. Facebook and YouTube. But in the last five minutes, let's talk about the episodes we just filmed yesterday, <coughs> what we got yeah. coming up, and we, why we, we, we little... switched the schedule. People have asked, why did you live stream last week and this week? Okay, so I guess I have to answer all that. Yes, you do. 
<laughs> Thank you for that, dear. You're welcome. So we did a little, we did a marathon yesterday for us. Normally we would have been at camp, but the weather up there was horrible, and we didn't have guests. So we said, "Why go up there?" Oh, good. Mackenzie just got very excited. Yay! Um, so yesterday we filmed first two cocktail episodes. We filmed something called a gin daisy, which is a bubbly, sweet, wonderful, refreshing drink. Then we filmed something a little more sophisticated. We filmed the revolver cocktail, uh, which is really, really good. And then we started working on our version of an espresso martini. And uh, we might have made three of them to kind of get it right. Because, you know, you have to three. make things. We didn't. We three. did three. We did three of the revolvers to get it exactly right, and then we did three of the... Three. Yes, no. dear. Yes, dear. You don't remember because you were drunk. Uh, but then we also filmed a full episode. We did a little... Uh, I have an appetizer for you. Little, cute little skewers. Not quite as big as these, uh, but it's, it's this marinated feta that you serve with olives and mint, and it's all these Mediterranean flavors on a little canapé skewer, so it's just delicious and it's super easy. Nice little bite-sized things. So why did we switch and have two weeks back to back? That's because next week is Memorial Day here in the United States, and that's why this was all about grilling, because here in the US, Memorial Day is the unofficial start of the summer season, summertime and of grilling season, so we thought, let's talk about all the memories and grilling and all this stuff today. We're gonna take off next week, so we're not gonna have a live stream. We're gonna be up in the mountains. Uh, for a long time, for five whole days, maybe six. So we need to uh, find someone to come in and take care of the cats, he says as he looks at his son. I can do Friday. Flutter, flutter. I can do Friday after that one. Um, we can do some. You know, I, yeah. Says my, my dear friend over here, oh, he can do it, who is allergic, allergic to, cat. to cats. And, and, it doesn't matter. How's that? And, and, oh, and Hal loves cats, right? Sure. <laughs> but we're going to be away, and we want you all to spend the time with your family and friends. Uh, so and by switching that, that gets us back to every other weekend, right. because four weeks from that is also Fourth of July. So this kind of skips around that. And hopefully by September, these live streams will be popular enough. We'll do them every week. But for now. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Every week. <sighs> I'm eating my burger. Shush. Okay. So I guess I know what you have planned for us doing live streams every week. This is from the man who uh, a couple of years ago said, we will never do live streams. The equipment is too much. It's too intenseful. And then he was like, I think we can go live. Okay, let's do it. When he works through stuff and he's ready, it's fine. I, I just go for the ride. <laughs> Although, I have to say, the outdoor camera, the grill cam, that was my idea. And I said to him, can you make this happen? I have this concept, and it came to me in the middle of the week, and he's like, And the scary part is, out. we didn't have to spend any money. We had everything to do it. That was the best part. That was not the scariest part, because right away, you're like, okay, I need a 120-foot cable, and that's going to be 50 I'm like, no, no, forget it, no. Do not Amazon anything, no. Never a fight to get me to grill. Well, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that, but... See, now the grill cam looks all alone. There's no you one there. Look how green our lawn is and the woods behind it. Isn't that beautiful? All that green out there. All right, it's wrap-up time. Just about wrap-up time, yep. So we talked about what we kind of have coming up next. We have two cocktails and appetizer. Yeah, you will be seeing me doing more grilling. I may even just start with something simple, like here's how you grill a steak. Would you watch that? You said you yes, struggle, I see? Well, hey, actually, since we're on that subject and we haven't done a lot of uh, basic skills, wouldn't that, that be a good basic skill to do? Ba grilling steak. And then the other one is, we're going to be doing basic skills on how to make barbecue sauce. And I mentioned this last week, too, because, excuse me, most people make barbecue sauce. They start with good old ketchup, right? That's not how mine starts. I'm not going to tell you how it does, but it's delicious. And it's been better than, I think, any of that crap you get in a jar. Even though I always keep a few jars around for that emergency. But yeah, why not do a basic skill on that? And um, what else we got coming up, dear? What else? You will be seeing us filming from camp. 
once in a while. We may film next week even, since we're there for five days. Right, uh, but the question has been asked a couple times about could we live stream from camp? And the answer is kind of no. And that's because all the equipment I have under here is fiber optic, and it's a bear to move. Yeah. We did live streams from camp, you know, last year and before that, when we only had two cameras and didn't have all of this. And it was very stressful setting it up. And it took hours to set up. This stuff doesn't really travel well. The cameras do, but not the TV studio and switcher, which is under my legs. If you were watching last summer, you probably remember I would be talking like, oh, wait, there's the dog. Oh, here comes the golf cart. Oh, hold on, our neighbors are running their leaf blower to, yeah. Like, hi guys, we're on TV here, live, thank you. Did you ever settle on a name for the golf cart? Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Um, it's Kermit. Phil says it's Kermit. Kermit. I say I it's- I like the grasshopper. I like grasshopper, I like Brutus Jr., but we'll call it Kermit. It's fine, it's all good. I already have his sticker. I even got to drive it once. With him in the seat going, slow it down, slow it down, watch that bump, the slow it down. the out of me. Golf yeah. too sweet, stop and bonsai. Well, he was like, putt, 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 like, come on. There's a line of cars behind us, dear. Putt, putt, look at that, putt, putt, look at that. So, yeah, I went a little faster. All right, so I think we're about wrapping up. It's 4.32. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, remember, keep tuning in. Keep hitting that subscribe button and that like button and that notification bell. We will see you all next time. We'll be in chat for a few more minutes. And have a good week. And happy Memorial Day. Bye.